Okay, so now we're moving on to non-pharmacological interventions for osteoarthritis. Conservative, um, or like range of motion, strengthening, aerobic exercise, balance with periods of rest. We can use both heat and ice. We keep in mind that you do not place ice directly on the skin and that it is a maximum of 20 minutes at a time. This is part of the action alert on page 308. Heat may decrease the muscle tension around the tender joint, thus decreasing the pain. Cold works by numbing the nerve endings and decreasing secondary joint inflammation. Joint replacement nursing interventions to prevent complications are listed on page 311 on table 18-2. And postoperative care of the older adult with the total hip is on page 311 on table 18-2. Please review femoral nerve block critical rescue on page 315 and nursing safety priority um, as well. And we will discuss the plan of care for the postoperative patient um, in the live chapters. Other forms of non-pharmacological interventions include, um, we've already talked about heat and ice. They may need assistive devices such as walkers or canes, and they should lose weight if they are obese. That will also help with osteoarthritis pain. Patient education for patients with arthritis, um, especially with osteoarthritis, but with all arthritis, but especially um, osteoarthritis. Um, weight loss for the obese, range of motion and physical activities that do not increase pain. A lot of times they'll encourage swimming or water walking. They should stop smoking, decrease or eliminate caffeine intake. Um, and then if they're going to have surgery, such as a total um, knee replacement, the perioperative the preoperative teaching will include postoperative restrictions and preoperative care. And those are all um, joint replacement nursing interventions to prevent complications are on um, page 311, table 18-2. And we'll talk about those, all of these, um, the, all the different tables and joint, or tables and charts on page 311 and 312 are very important. We will discuss them in the live lecture. Um, for um, in chapter 51, but I do want you to know that all of those, there's a discharge teaching about the total hip on page 312, um, which is chart 18-3, and um, care of the patient in the um, CPM machine for the total knee patient on page 316, chart 18-4. All of those um, are extremely important when looking at patient education for your patient with arthritis. Um, so please make sure that you have, take the time to look at those. We will discuss them in um, our live lecture as well. We're going to move on now to rheumatoid arthritis. Now this is different. This is not caused from wear and tear. Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic, progressive, systematic autoimmune disease. Again, Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic, progressive, systematic autoimmune disease. It is an inflammation of the connective tissue at the joint and elsewhere throughout the body. You have to have the presence of rheumatoid factor or the RA factor. It presents much earlier than osteoporosis. Rheumatoid arthritis presents as early as age 20 to age 40. It occurs in multiple symmetrical joints, like it would occur in both hands. It would occur in both knees. Um, it would have periods where it was worse than others. It is different than osteoarthritis. Again, rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic, progressive, systematic autoimmune disease. It is the inflammation of the connective tissue at the joints. They have to have the presence of RA factor. Okay, this is a one slide review of patho. Remember, the joint cartilage is damaged. When this occurs, the neutrophils T cells 
uh, in the synovial fluid degrade the um, articular cartilage surface. As the cartilage degrades, the synovial membrane is damaged and inf the inflammation process exacerbates. The granulated tissue forms and leads to scar tissue development. Bone density decreases that can lead to osteoporosis on top of the rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, this is different. They're having, um, they'll have osteoporosis, which remember is a decrease in bone density. Okay, osteoporosis is the leading cause of osteoarthritis, but osteoporosis is the decrease in bone density. And here, the decrease in bone density is being caused by, as the cartilage de degenerates and the synovial membrane is damaged and the inflammation process exacerbates, and you have that granulated tissue forming leading to scar tissue. And you also have bone density decreasing. Okay, and then the joint then becomes immobile. Here you have with the joint inflammation, you can see the panis areas of the eroded cartilage. Um, you have see the increased joint fluid where they'll have actual swelling at the joint. Um, so you can see that they'll have the outpouching at the knee um, from the um, increased fluid around the knee. So diagnostic criteria for rheumatoid arthritis. They have to have morning stiffness for at least one hour lasting six weeks. Remember we look, when we looked at osteoarthritis, they may have some morning stiffness, but it only lasts for 30 minutes. So with rheumatoid arthritis, it has to last at least one hour. They have swelling and effusion of the joints, three or more joints that last greater than six weeks. Rheumatoid arthritis will involve the wrists. It will involve other joints other than just the long extremities. Um, it is a systemic arthritis um, in the corresponding joints. They will have rheumatoid nodules. They will, have, they will be positive serum rheumatoid factor. And they will have x-ray changes, arthritic changes in both the hands and the wrists. Sometimes they'll have hands and wrist changes and not have changes in long bone or in um, weight-bearing joints. Where if you remember with osteoarthritis, you generally see it first in your weight-bearing joints. Again, unlike osteoarthritis, this is symmetrical joints. So if it's affecting the right wrist, it's affecting the left wrist. If it's affecting the left right knee, it's affecting the left knee. So they have, um, they'll have radiological changes in both. Um, it's not, it doesn't affect one more than the other. Rheumatoid arthritis is a symmetrical disease, a symmetric disease, because it is a systemic disease. Please make sure that you look at the manifest manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis. Make sure you look at chart 18-7 on page 318. Again, with rheumatoid arthritis, they have bilateral symmetrical joint involvement. The joints are swollen, and inflamed. They are reddened and warm to the touch. The joints become un unstable. Limited range of motion in the affected joints. They'll have ulnar deviation of the fingers or a swan neck deformity. And there's pictures of that in our book. They'll have flexion contractures. Along with rheumatoid arthritis, they will have respiratory complications manifesting as pleurisy, pneumonitis, diffuse interstitial fibrosis, and interstitial lung disease, and pulmonary hypertension. Again, with rheumatoid arthritis, they will have pulmonary and respiratory complications, such as pleurisy, um, pneumonitis, diffuse um, interstitial fibrosis, or interstitial lung disease, and they will have pulmonary hypertension. They can have cardio complica cardiovascular complications, such as pericarditis and myocarditis. When you think of rheumatoid arthritis, think of the seven S's. Sunrise stiffness that occurs greater than 30 minutes, usually greater than an hour. They have soft, tender, warm joints. It is symmetrical. The, the synovial space area is inflamed. That membrane is inflamed. 
it is systemic. Not only does it affect the joints, but it affects the cardiovascular system. It affects the pulmonary system. Okay. As you can see here, there are many different diagnostic testing they do for rheumatoid arthritis. But for rheumatoid arthritis, they have to have a positive rheumatoid factor and, in, and an increased SED rate and the C-reactive protein. And all of this is from inflammation. But they have got to have that rheumatoid factor. If they do not have a positive rheumatoid factor, it is not rheumatoid arthritis. Um, but they do do chest x-rays to, to observe to see where the joint deterioration can be. Okay, for patient education for rheumatoid arthritis, I want to make sure that you look at chart 18-10 on page 324. Um, you want to talk about disease progress and um, treatments, medications, um, management for stiffness and pain, use of assessive um, devices. Um, sometimes they'll use splints. You want to make sure that they're conserving their energy and balance rest with activities, set priorities and pace activities, delegate responsibilities to others, um, and they need to plan ahead and do not extend their personal um, activity tolerance because it takes them a long time to recover. Some of the non-pharmacological interventions that we need to make sure that we're teaching our patients um, with rheumatoid arthritis is to allow for adequate rest and proper positioning that ice and heat applications are important in pain management, that it may help um, when the joints are inflamed to apply ice. Remember, we don't apply it directly to the um, skin, and we only leave it on for 20 minutes. Um, sometimes they will use um, heated paraffin wax. Always make sure you test it prior to them using it um, because it will, it will feel good on um, arthritic fingers. Um, especially relieves sometimes with the morning stiffness. Sometimes they will have plasmapheresis or a plasma exchange. Um, this is to remove antibodies that cause the disease. Although not commonly done, this procedure may be combined with steroid therapy for patients in severe and, and with severe life-threatening disease. They um, will try the, the um, plasmapheresis sometimes to help um, decrease that RA factor. Um, other things that we need to make sure of with our patients with um, rheumatoid arthritis is that they um, maintain an adequate um, weight, that they do not become obese, um, to make sure that they are conserving their energy. Again, look at that table, um, or excuse me, it's a chart, 18-10 on page 324. Um, it talks about um, conserving the energy um, and making sure that the patients are well taken care of in that manner and learn how to conserve their energy to be able to um, do things that they want to do. Way back on page 306, there is table 18-1. It is the differentiating features of rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. This is very important for you to look at. It is on page 306, table 18-1. Um, it describes the differences and what um, is the difference between RCR arthritis and RA. So please be familiar with that table. There is a very nice chart on page um, 323, the common examples of drug therapy for rheumatoid arthritis. You will not be responsible for that entire chart. What I do want you to know is over here on page um, 322, it talks about the primary health care provider, often a rheumatologist, makes the decision on the appropriate drug therapy for the patients with RA. The first line treatment for a patient with RA is a disease modifying antirhythmic anti drug, such as methotrexate, which is an immunosuppressive medication in a low dose once a week. Um, is the mainstay therapy for RA because it is effective and relatively inexpensive. And you, this is what I would want you to know, that the first-line treatment for RA is a modifying anti-rheumatic drug, which is called methotrexate. 
It is done in low doses once a week, and it's usually given orally. And it's the mainstay drug for rheumatoid arthritis because it is effective and relatively inexpensive. We need to make sure that we are, I want you to make sure you look at the nursing safety priority for this. It's the drug alert on page um, 322 as well.